In this tutorial, I will explain how you can program a micro bit to use a flame sensor. When the sensor detects fire, a buzzer will sound. You will need a micro bit and a Key Studio 37 in 1 starter kit for this project. A link to details about the kit can be found in the notes. The components you will need are a micro bit mainboard, a Key Studio micro bit sensor V2 shield, a USB cable, a Key Studio flame sensor, a Key Studio digital buzzer module, and six DuPont jumper wires. All of these, except the micro bit itself, can be found in the kit. Details of all these components can be found in the notes. You should be careful to choose the correct buzzer, the passive buzzer. There are only two buzzers in the kit. The passive buzzer is the one which does not have the letters HYDZ written on the top. You may also need a USB-A to USB-C adapter if you have a more modern computer, which will enable you to connect up the micro bit. You should connect the components exactly as in this diagram. A link to the diagram can also be found in the notes. Don't be too concerned if the micro bit does not go into the sensor shield at first. You'll need to push it in with a little bit of force to ensure it is correctly in place. You should pay very close attention to the name of each port on the sensor shield and especially the flame sensor. These ports can be in different orders depending on how old your kit and components are. So connect them according to the names on the port instead of just blindly following the diagram. You should carefully trace each cable to make sure they are plugged in exactly as required. When you connect the cables from the buzzer, make sure that cable S is connected to S7 on the shield. Make sure that the cable coming from positive is connected to V18 on the shield and make sure that the cable connected to negative is connecting to port G9 on the sensor shield. When you are connecting the flame sensor, make sure that port DO is connected to port SO on the shield. Make sure that port GND is connected to port G1 on the shield and make sure that port VCC is connected to port V12 on the shield. Remember that the cable from the computer must be connected to the micro bit when you download, but it can be connected to either the micro bit or the sensor shield if you just need a power source. So it is now time to make the program. So we'll navigate to make code. Once we're there, we'll make a new project. We'll call it flame sensor. Now we will use both of these blocks on start and forever. Um, on start, we just want to go down here to more and we want to disable the onboard LEDs because we won't be using them. After that, we will go to logic and we want to take if else and we'll just nest that here in forever. And then we want to go to advanced and we will find pins. And it's very important to make sure we get the digital read pin not write not analog but digital read pin and we'll drop that down here and then we also want to go to logic and we want to get this equal sign and we'll just drop this inside here and so we will say if digital read pin po is equal to one and effectively what that means if you look at the construction or the diagram your PO is connected to your flame sensor. So if the PO is detecting anything, then your buzzer should respond accordingly. So we'll go down to pins, and once again we'll get, uh, we'll, this time we're getting digital write pin, because digital write pin is for output, which is your buzzer. And we'll drop this up here, and we'll drop this here. And so the buzzer will have two settings, Obviously, if there is nothing detected, we don't want our buzzer to go off. So in that case, we will say P7. And once again, if you look at the diagram and your connections, pin 7 should connect to your buzzer. If the flame sensor doesn't detect anything, the buzzer should not make a sound. But if the flame sensor does detect something, then the buzzer should make a sound. So that is our program completed. Once the program has been completed, you should plug in the cable. Your computer should respond by showing a micro bit icon on your desktop. Then you can download the program file and just drop it onto the micro bit icon. You will see a light flashing on your micro bit as it is downloaded. 
Since you'll need a flame to test your sensor, please be very careful as you test or get someone to help you. You can use a lighter or a candle. The flame sensor should flash a light as it detects a flame. If the program and connections are correct, the buzzer should also sound. If your flame sensor does not function like this, there are a few things you can try. First, look to see if a red light on your flame sensor turns on as the flame is near. This means the sensor is working, just not your buzzer. In this case, check the buzzer connections and also double check if you've connected the wrong type of buzzer. Swap the buzzer you are using with the other buzzer in your kit. Also make sure that you have connected all three cables from both the buzzer and the flame sensor to exactly the right pins on the sensor shield. Remember once again that you must connect based on the names of each port rather than just following the diagram blindly since the ports can be in different orders on newer components. Also double check the program to make sure you have chosen all the correct blocks and finally you can adjust the sensitivity of the fire alarm. You can do this by using a screwdriver to twist the potentiometer. You can find all details of this project at the link to the Key Studio wiki below. It is Project 17 Fire Alarm.